CKD patients represent a particularly sensitive and vulnerable population because the ability to regulate sodium and water balance deteriorates with declining glomerular filtration rate. With the progression of kidney disease, the tight regulation of sodium-driven plasma osmolality and volume is progressively lost. In CKD, excess sodium and water retention occur over time, causing extracellular fluid overload. Patients with fluid overload experience many unpleasant symptoms. The most common symptoms are rapid weight gain, headaches, cramping, low energy, swelling in the face, waist, hands and feet, shortness of breath, high blood pressure. The combination of extracellular fluid overload and poor fluid management are detrimental to the cardiovascular health of hemodialysis patients. Fluid overload is a common characteristic associated with progression in CKD. As a consequence of fluid overload, the cardiac load and therefore blood pressure increases, worsening the physiology and function of the heart and leading to left ventricular cardiomyopathy, coronary artery or cerebrovascular disease. Particularly the cardiovascular sequelae associated with CKD and fluid overload are recognized to increase mortality. Additionally, fluid overload is an independent predictor of morbidity and all-cause mortality in patients with CKD of stages 4 to 5. Zockley and colleagues demonstrated that approximately 30% of hemodialysis patients are severely fluid overloaded, defined as a fluid overload volume of greater or equal to 2.5 liters. In the previous episode, we learned about sodium-induced changes which result in increased fluid retention, a healthy compensatory mechanism to re-establish homeostatic osmolality. Any shift in fluid volume alters cellular tonicity, leading to shrinking or swelling of cells or lumen. In chronic kidney disease patients, such a shift of this otherwise healthy compensation adds a physiological and cardiovascular burden. The impact of fluid overload on the distribution of water across the various cellular compartments spreads as follows. There is more fluid in the extracellular compartment, while intracellular and intravascular volumes are reduced. And adequate removal of sodium and extracellular water during hemodialysis is therefore paramount towards improving the hemodynamics and cardiovascular risk profiles of end-stage kidney disease patients. The next episode will deal with the impact of hemodialysis on end-stage kidney disease patients, the benefits and the challenges imposed on the patient's health by managing their sodium water balance amongst others.